Okay, so I'm going to do a little introduction. Everybody's yeah. muted and we have got record hit. And at the end, we will open up the floor for Q&A. You can either raise your oh. hand. There's these little uh, reaction buttons on the bottom. And if you click one of those, there's a hand that's raised. We can worry about that at the very end. But I am very excited to introduce tonight's speaker and actual photo club member, Bruce Forrester. And as a portrait photographer myself, I know that connecting with people is critical to helping your subject feel comfortable and relaxed. And if you've met Bruce, then you know he is one of the warmest and friendliest people you might ever meet. Bruce has spent the past 50 years photographing people and events for a wide range of publications, corporate and private clients, and just for fun. His what photography has been exhibited in the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, and his photos of celebrities have been published in what do you mean watching TV? countries. You can't even see it. Can you mute, Donald? Thank you so much, Bruce, for sharing your work with us tonight. Are you watching it? Do you want to watch something else? Uh, uh, Bruce Forster. Hey. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, uh, Stephanie, you might want to mute. Uh, the crowd. Let so, me mute uh, everybody. Oh, I'm going to uh, mute you too, Bruce. So hold on for one sec. Okay, Bruce, unmute yourself. <laughs> muting myself. And here I go. Um, first of all, uh, I'm so flattered and so honored to have you all join me this evening. Um, and special thanks to Stephanie for inviting me to make this presentation. And, uh, and thank you for muting because I know there's some hecklers out there in the crowd. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm seeing people, there's, I've got, a, got people from Portugal, from all over the continental United States. Uh, I've got Bay Area friends and Maui friends. So uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna have a talk that has something interesting for everyone. Uh, I'm gonna be showing photos from uh, my books, uh, uh, Celebration and War, uh, the Sausalito Houseboat Community in the 1970s, and for my book, uh, Celebrity Photos from the 1980s and 90s. And then I'm going to show photos from what I'm doing right now. Uh, 2024 is my 50th year as a working professional photographer. I'm old. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, these days, I mostly photograph just for fun. Um, for the most part, I've loved my career as a photographer. It's been exciting, creative, challenging, and it's given me so many opportunities that would not have been available to me otherwise. Um, photography has been my passion as well as my livelihood. So I graduated from the San Francisco Art Institute in 1974. And after graduating, I moved to Sausalito, uh, and if you don't know, it's just over the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. And I spent the next four years working part-time in, a, in a, a, a photo studio in downtown Sausalito called the Village Big Shot, doing portraits and lots and lots of darkroom work. And uh, during this time, I, I worked on personal photo projects and got ready to launch myself as an independent photographer. I moved to Fairfax around the corner from Stephanie's photo studio in 1978. And then seven years later, I moved to Mill Valley where I've had a home since 1986. And I've been living uh, part-time on Maui since 1989. And I've been spending half the year since 2007. And this is where I am right now. And so, aloha. My specialty and passion has always been photographing people and events. Uh, one of my early projects was on the Sausalito houseboat community. And the first group of photos I'm gonna show is from my, my book, Celebration and War, the Sausalito houseboat community in the 1970s. These photos were taken almost 50 years ago. The photos I took as a young man are now a historical record and it's touching to me that so many people in my photographs are no longer here, except in people's memories and in photos. It was a very different time in the world back then. Uh, the hippie movement was going strong. Um, alternative lifestyles 
were something that a lot of people were involved in. And this, these photos are going to show an alternative lifestyle. The photos were taken between 1977 and 1979. And for a technical note, all photos were shot on Tri-X film with either a Leica M3 or Leica M4 rangefinder camera. And so with that, I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. If you were driving down Bridgeway at the north end of Sausalito in 1977, this is what you saw. This is the ferry boat, the Charles Van Dam. Uh, behind it is the ferry boat Issaquah. These uh, ferry boats, after uh, they were no longer in use, were pulled up into the mud and turned into um, whatever they became. Uh, and this is at Waldo Point. Here's a view of the community. Uh, this is the Gate 5 area. Uh, the name uh, uh, Gates referred to when this area was uh, part of the Marine ship and it was building Liberty ships for the World War II effort. Uh, the gates were different areas that people could enter. And uh, uh, this is the community. This is the view from the top of the ferry Charles Van Dam. Here's, here's a view of the main dock and you can see a bay full of anchor outs. Uh, this was this was a different time. Uh, I I found that the community full of high energy and creativity. There was music, there was theater, um, dancing, mass making, boat building. Um, there were certainly other parts uh, that weren't so high energy, but the crowd I wanted to run with was the high energy group. Uh, Almost every occasion was cause for celebration. Uh, on the right, you see the great Joe Tate um, with the band, The Red Legs. Uh, that was a popular band back then. People built their homes out of whatever materials were available. Uh, and it was, a, it was a creative time and people were living their lives as they saw fit. This is a shot of the Ferry Issaquah and uh, the pilot houses have now been restored and are sitting at the head of the Issaquah dock. This, this was a spectacular ferry, uh, the San Rafael, and it was home to uh, Piro Caro, who lived on the upper deck, and, and the pilot houses were also uh, occupied. Here's Piro Caro. Uh, he was a houseboat elder and one of the, the leaders of the community. He's holding one of the newest members of the houseboat community. This, this is Don Arquez, and he's often referred to as the godfather of the houseboat community. He owned all the property and had a very casual um, uh, uh, attitude towards collecting rent and allowing people to live on his property. Here's Chris Hardman. Uh, Chris passed away just last month. An um, uh, uh, internationally acclaimed theater director uh, who came up with um, uh, so many amazing uh, theater pieces that influence how, how people go to museums and audio tours uh, and a brilliant mass maker. One day I'm over it, hanging out with them. Uh, these were my friends. This is who I hung out with. And they said, let's just march over to uh, Don Arquez's warehouse. And that's where that historic photo came from. Houseboats came in all different shapes and sizes, just depending on what was available. And this was an alternative lifestyle. It was a real community. Um, here, uh, you can see a row of mansions on, on, on the, the hillside. Uh, and a lot of them did not like looking out at the houseboat community. Uh, traveling around by uh, rowboat was the mode of transportation. Uh, and this houseboat I'm looking at is called the Donald Duck with a little boy waving. 
So uh, I was around 25 when I'm taking these photos. Uh, I was working part time in the photo studio and that was paying my bills. Uh, and this is, uh, I never actually lived on a houseboat. I lived across the street, but this was my community. This is, this is, uh, these were my friends. This is what I was doing. I love photographing people. For me, it's sharing, it's connecting. Uh, for me, a, a really good photo is, is the point in between the subject and the photographer, that connection. Uh, this is Laura Bell, a very important member of the houseboat community. And this is the great Larry Moyer, um, beatnik, filmmaker, actor, and uh, most of all, storyteller. Uh, and I loved hanging out with him and listening to his story. They were outrageous. And I think they were uh, even as outrageous as they were, I think they were even true. Hanging out with Bob Dylan, hanging out with Mao Tse Tung, uh, uh, hanging out with all sorts of characters. Here's Sarah and her pet bunny. It's a connection between the photographer and the subject. Here's Cece and Heather Wilcoxon and Bob Allerton. This is taken on their houseboat on the main dock. Uh, all creative friends of mine. Albert Morse. Uh, he was the copyright lawyer for the artist R. Crone and, and also a fine photographer and uh, definitely a character. Here's uh, the, co the community area. You see Sutro Shower is in the background. That's the community shower. Uh, it was a real community and I found it to be an industrious community. Um, uh, everybody was always working on something or other. Um, now, uh, here's Joan McLaughlin doing a bottom job on her boat. Um, a lot of the houseboats had wooden hulls. And so periodically they had to be dry docked and the rot dealt with and patched up. Uh, these days, most houseboats are on uh, concrete hulls. And, and they're not called houseboats anymore. They're called floating homes. Here's Bob Callick on the left and a gentleman named uh, Bear Ass Bob on the right, uh, doing something or other with a bunch of pilings. This is Ray Speck, master boat builder. Um, his, his, his boats were works of art. He, he's now relocated to the Port Townsend area. And Dudley Lewis, he's working on his boat. But uh, everybody seemed to always be working on something. Now, not everybody. There was a group of people that um, uh, were not as high energy. Um, maybe there was uh, substance abuse or all sorts of issues. But the crowd that I liked hanging out with um, uh, were doing exciting things. This is a uh, herring uh, season, uh, which was a very big deal back then. Uh, during the herring season, the bay would be filled with herring. Um, it's not true anymore. Uh, it's been fished out, and so there's not that many herring anymore. But it was a big source of income for members of the houseboat uh, community. Here's the sisters, Heather and Cece Wilcoxon, uh, both uh, creative forces. Heather, this is Heather uh, uh, Wilcoxon. Uh, she's become a, a artist of renown, internationally exhibited, and she's out uh, to create some art. Pete, Pete Rotundo uh, helped create the compost toilet that was used by so many different houseboaters. Uh, he went on to become an architect. This is the houseboat, the owl created by Chris Roberts, um, one of his masterpieces. Um, it's since been floated and put on a concrete hull. Here's the houseboat, the Jesse James. Uh, people lived in all sorts of different kind of, kinds of uh, houseboats. Uh, it was really 
whatever somebody's creativity and imagination could create. This one was called the Spanish helmet. Skiffs. Uh, this was a mode of transportation, and I'm um, seeing seeing um, a boat full of members of the Snake Theater uh, with the water up almost to its rail. Uh, here's a dock filled with skiffs in all different shapes and sizes. And Bob Allerton, he was often referred to as the Robert Redford of the Gates. Uh, and uh, very popular. Annie Hallett, a brilliant mass maker and adventurous spirit. She's here's her with a, a rabbit that's being raised for the table. Patrick, another character. And uh, again, uh, I love taking photos of people. It's 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 a connection. It's a way of connecting to people. And uh, here's guys hanging out around the fire pit. Um, that's what some people did. Now, this was this was the life of people living outside the box. Literally, this was uh, an adventurous crowd of people just living life differently. Uh, here's Jonquil underneath all that hair in a, in, in a sort of tribal ritual for, for the kids that lived down there it was an adventure of boats and gangplanks and uh, uh it was an adventure uh, i think this was from a fourth of july celebration you can see the sausalito cruising club in the upper left and uh, this was uh, part of a kid's adventure and I think a couple, a couple of Joe Tate's sons are here, and this is the community playground. Now, the little girl skipping rope is named Subi. And back in 1979, I did a children's book uh, with my photos and text by uh, the great Phil Frank and his wife, Sue Frank. And it, it was the story of Subi wandering around the community and each person taught her a different skill. They shared uh, uh, boat building, uh, fishing, uh, mass making, dancing. And that was really what the community was like. Everybody shared their skills. Everybody supported each other. It, it really felt a bit like a, a special time. Um, and we all felt like we were part of something special. Here's a mother teaching her son how to row a boat. Well, here's, here's the playground. the gangplanks. This was an adventure. And um, I was enthralled with being part of it. Here's Christmas with uh, Frank Anderson, a local uh, Sausalu character at, at Santa Claus. Here's a sculpture created by the Snake Theater. It's they named it Beelzebub, and members of the community posted their wishes and dreams and maybe regrets on the sculpture, and then it was floated out into the San Francisco the Bay, Richardson Bay, which is part of San Francisco Bay, and lit on fire. And this was years before Burning Man, and possibly an influence for uh, the Burning Man celebration. Now came development, and developers came in and wanted to build new docks, clean up the area, charge uh, higher rents, and the houseboat community 
uh, fought back against the developers with every means at their disposal. Here's Chris Hardman leading a protest march. Uh, the character in the, in the paper mache uh, mass is Mr. Big Bucks. Uh, the Snake Theater put together this cardboard community. Uh, by now, uh, TV crews were showing up to film the protests. And this was a uh, made for TV moment uh, when the bulldozers uh, came in and bulldozed the cardboard figures. Here's the Marin County Sheriff's clearing a blockade. Uh, that's Piro Caro in the center and uh, 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 clearing out so bulldozers can come in. These, this, these were the houseboat wars. This was a very heavy time down there. Uh, a lot of people getting arrested uh, and uh, just a very heavy time. Uh, here was a particularly pitched battle with um, protesters trying to block uh, uh, pilings from being driven off for a new pier. There's another battle. Uh, maybe you can recognize a lot of the people manning, uh, manning the manning the the battlements. And finally, uh, this is. Uh, a note negotiation meeting. Uh, developer Luke Cook uh, uh, is on the uh, left. Uh, Sheriff Richard Hangisto is on the right with a tie. And uh, there's a negotiation settlement trying to come up with something that's going to um, co come up with a plan that can allow development to proceed and uh, houseboaters to stay in their homes. And uh, this is what I looked like back then. So, uh, whoops. And now I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna talk a little bit more. Uh, uh, at this point, this, this, uh, I had just moved to Fairfax. This is 1979 and, uh, I've stopped working at the photo studio and, um, trying to figure out, uh, my career as a photographer. I started working for different local and then national publications that specialized in, uh, high society events and celebrities. And the world was still a very different place. Um, there was no internet, no smartphones, uh, cell phones were rare, uh, no Facebook. Newspapers and print magazines were the main, were a main source of communication. Uh, people would get a newspaper delivered to their front door every day. Uh, tabloids and the society pages were a very big deal back then. And starting in 1980, I became part of San Francisco social columnist Herb Kane's crowd and a go-to photographer for any celebrity passing through the San Francisco Bay Area on a promotional tour or some sort of celebrity event. Having their photo taken is part of a celebrity's job as they promote their latest film, book, cause, or just to stay in the public's eye. The next group of photos in my presentation are from my book, Celebrity Photos from the 1980s and 90s. These photos were shot for a variety of clients in a wide range of situations. Most were shot for different publications. Many were shot while working for Macy's during a time when celebrity personal appearances happened on a weekly basis. Uh, everybody had their own uh, fragrance line back then or a product and uh, and then uh, an in-person store launch that uh, Macy's would call me in to photograph. This was also a period 
when American TV shows ruled the world. Uh, shows like Dallas and Dynasty and Charlie's Angels um, uh, were syndicated worldwide. And I was part of a, a photo agency based in Hollywood that would sell my celebrity photos worldwide to different publications and tabloids. And uh, 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 at this point, I was now uh, using Nikon cameras that continues to be my camera of choice. Uh, all photos that I'm about to show you were shot on color slide film. You couldn't look at the back of your camera and say, "Did I? Do I have it or not?" You had to, you had to know that you had it, uh, and uh, hopefully you could go and uh, uh, sleep at night knowing that you had your shot. Uh, it's all on, was shot on Ektachrome or Kodachrome. Some of these shots were done at celebrities' homes. Many were done in hotels where they would be staying on their promo tour. Sometimes I would have as long as an hour or more. More often, I would only have a few minutes. I never asked for autographs or took selfies. Uh, I would always do a little bit of research so I could say something intelligent, but uh, I always made sure that I did not talk too much. So now I'm gonna share my screen again. Now, here's Elizabeth Taylor. I photographed her for Macy's, and she was often there promoting her fragrance, Black Diamonds. And she's there with her dog, Sugar. Um, when I'm not doing shots like that, oh, and here it goes. Um, uh, here's Charlton Heston. Uh, I photographed him in his home in Bel Air. He was the star of uh, Planet of the Apes and Ben-Hur and, and uh, here's Vincent Price. Uh, delightful man, this was for the San Francisco Film Festival. This is Marky Mark, uh, now better known as Mark Wahlberg, uh, one of the biggest names in Hollywood. But back then at the time, he was a model for Calvin Klein and uh, the leader of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Uh, this was shot for Macy's. And also for Macy's, Anna Nicole Smith. Uh, she got to be famous uh, by marrying an 89-year-old uh, multimillionaire after being a, a Playboy Playmore. Uh, Merv Griffin. Uh, the talk show host uh, down at his home in Carmel Valley. Uh, here, here's Jimmy Stewart. Uh, I hope you've all seen the wonderful movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, this guy was a real uh, screen legend. But uh, you're going to see that there's a carnation pin to his, his jacket. This was just that. This was at a uh, a, a large gathering, a party, and he was the guest of honor. And my assignment was to somehow corner him and get uh, get something that could be used for um, a full page uh, a cover or an article. And uh, so a lot of this is crowded room photography where I'm working under pressure and uh, somehow have to manage to corner somebody and uh, get my shot. Here's author Sidney Sheldon, and this is at his home in Palm Springs. And uh, you can see the decor, uh, and that gives you a little bit of a time frame as to um, the era that this was uh, photographed during. And uh, when I flew into Palm Springs, uh, I'm with a writer. We got picked up at the airport in his assistant's Rolls Royce. And so uh, my one and only trip in a Rolls Royce. President Gerald Ford, uh, a 37th president after Nixon at a conference in San Francisco. Henry Kissinger, uh, the, the controversial diplomat. Now, uh, these were set up as a, a magazine uh, articles. That was the assignment. But 
uh, what would happen is uh, the magazine would make arrangements with their publicist or their agent or whomever, and they'd say, uh, he's going to be here, and if you if he doesn't mind posing for you, then you can take his photo. So a lot of this was just flying by the seat of my pants. And he's at a mansion in Pacific Heights in San Francisco, uh, trying to raise money for something or other. And I'm in the foyer. I'm not allowed in the ballroom. And he comes out and he's in a bad mood. And he says, I'm not posing for any photos. I'm out of here. And I'm freaking out. Uh, so out of desperation, I say something like, oh, that was so cool how you bombed Cambodia. And then he sits down and he smiles and I take his picture. So uh, there was a lot of scrambling and hustling in getting these photos. Here's Clint Eastwood. This was, this was taken at a law enforcement banquet where he's getting some kind of award. So um, more crowded room photography. Uh, uh, here's uh, uh, Peter Coyote, um, actor, and also uh, does all the voiceover for all the Ken Burns documentaries. Dorothy Hamill. Uh, this was photographed up in Portland in a hotel. Uh, she was the Olympic gold medalist uh, for uh, ice skating and called America's sweetheart for a while. Another Olympic uh, gold medalist, Greg Louganis. This was shot for Macy's. Uh, Judy Collins. This was photographed at the Concord Pavilion um, backstage uh, before a concert. Paul Anka uh, photographed uh, at his home in Carmel with his Andy Warhol portrait. Sophia Loren, oh, what a pleasure it was just to be in her presence. She just radiated. Another old time actor, uh, Anthony Quinn from Zorba the Great and Lawrence of Arabia. Valerie Harper, and this was shot in a hotel in uh, Beverly Hills. I had a sort of a standard uh, 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 shooting technique. I would put uh, what's called a kicker light behind the subject that would light up the background, make it look like it's a a real studio, and then have uh, a main light lighting up um, the, the foreground, the, 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 the subject. Kelly Sabalis from Kojak. Lauren Hutton, um, actress, act, actor, and model. And this is in a crowded room, um, just uh, uh, and this was also a uh, crowded room photography uh, for Macy's, Isabella Rossellini. Uh, I remember her from the movie Blue Velvet. Anne Margaret, uh, one of Elvis Presley's co-stars. Francis Ford Coppola, this was for the San Francisco Film Festival. Uh, called one of the greatest directors of all time, Godfather, Apocalypse Now, um, Patton. Uh, here's heartthrob Ally McGraw from Love Story and Goodbye Columbus. Billy D. Williams. This was shot in a, on a film set in San Francisco and that was part of the Star Wars franchise. Marsha Mason. This was at some celebrity uh, gala. Tom Selleck, this from Y50 and Magnum PI. This was photographed at a celebrity party on Alcatraz, uh, the prison in the middle of the San Francisco Bay, John Forsythe. From Charlie's Angels. Linda Evans from Dynasty and so many other shows. Joan Collins. These two photos were, were, were shot in a restaurant in Beverly Hills. And uh, there's this whole line of 
paparazzi photographers outside the restaurant. But because I was working for the for for uh, uh, as part of the press and 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 our publication had made arrangements, I'm allowed in. It's a it's a cast party where they've taken over the restaurant. Um, and uh, I set up a little studio in the corner. And throughout the evening, I try and see if I can pull these these celebrities away for a, a, a quick photo shoot. And this is me. This is what I'm doing at the time. I've got a camera strap across my face, so that looks a little funny. But uh, I'm photographing Placido Domingo at the opening of the opera. And here's James Gardner. Uh, and Jack Lemon. This is at a celebrity golf tournament in Pebble Beach. And Jane Goodall, uh, the great anthropologist, primat primatologist. Um, I posted her photo recently uh, for her 90th birthday on Facebook, and there was a lot of response. Um, the way um, these situations worked is uh, I'd be working with a writer. This is for a magazine article, and the writer would interview first. And during that time, I'd sort of scout around for uh, photo locations and take candid shots. And then at the end, I'd have about 20 minutes to take photos. And uh, uh, she studied me very carefully. And I, and I think I got categorized as a young male uh, photographer. And uh, uh, she probably made some notes on my behavior afterwards. Jane Seymour. She was in the James Bond movie, Live and Let Die. This was from a, a party. Tony Bennett, he left his heart in San Francisco. Sean Austin, uh, Samwise Gamgee from Lord of the Rings. When he was, this is back when he was a kid. Oops, I'm gonna go back because I don't wanna shortchange Sharon Stone, uh, she, she, I only had a, a couple of minutes to photograph her, but she was radiant, and it was it was just a pleasure photographing her. Here's Thor Heyerdahl, the Norwegian explorer uh, that sailed across the Pacific in a in a raft. Kontiki, supermodel Paulina Portskova, shot for Macy's. Greg Morris uh, from the TV series Mission Impossible. Hal Linden from uh, uh, Barney Millis. Now, uh, here's Cheryl Ladd uh, from Charlie's Angels and, and much more. I work for a wide range of publications, some more sophisticated than others. Um, this was for the supermarket tabloids, and uh, it ran in more countries than I could even count. Um, uh, part, in part, I think, uh, because it was just uh, so wacky. And another wacky shot, same photo shoot, actually. Here's George Hamilton, famous for his tan and his debonair uh, manner uh, for the supermarket tabloids. Uh, quarterback, uh, 49er quarterback Joe Montana and his wife Jennifer at a Macy's fashion show. And Dwight Clark, his, uh, who, who caught uh, Joe Montana's most famous pass. Uh, Hispanic superstars, uh, Edward James Olmos, Carlos Santana, and Lou Diamond Phillips. This was actually an a opening of a Mexican restaurant. Uh, Nick Gravenitis, uh, Bay Area hero. Opera singer Luciano Pavarotti. Kevin Costner um, on an early movie promo and uh, did not like having his photo taken, but um, here it is. Bianca Jagger. Uh, 
this was Mick Jagger's wife, and and uh, everyone said Mick married her because she looked so much like him. Here's the great Ella Fitzgerald, first lady of song with 14 Grammys. And I'm ending this part of my presentation with the great Ray Charles, the genius. And so I'm just gonna stop sharing. And now I'm back. And um, now you've seen a bunch of my photos of people, and I'm going to uh, give a few tips uh, on photographing people. And if you're not a photographer, here are some tips on being photographed. So if you're photographing someone, try and project confidence. Try and try and just try. Try and uh let people think that you know what you're doing. People always can tell when somebody's nervous. So uh, how do you not be nervous when you're photographing celebrities or anybody else? Um, number one, know your equipment by heart. Your camera should be an extension of yourself. Uh, and then practice being centered and grounded. Uh, maybe meditate. Um, uh, that's a good practice for just about everything. Uh, I was once photographing in a very high pressure situation, uh, time deadlines, shouting, crowds, um, just the works. And somebody said, wow, what a stressful situation for you. Uh, and I said, no, it's, this is high pressure, but if I stress out, I'm going to screw up big time. So um, there's a big difference between a high pressure situation and then stressing out. That's how you react to the, the high pressure. Now, I, I photograph far more regular people than I photograph celebrities. And uh, people get nervous being photographed. Uh, not celebrities, you know, they're pros. They do that for a living. But when I'm photographing someone, I have a checklist that I look for where they're holding tension. And so first of all, it's shoulders, then next it's jaw, and then next hands. And I give people reminders to relax that part of their body, um, and, and that really helps. And then the first thing I do when I'm photographing someone is I give them a compliment. Um, I always tell women subjects that they look beautiful. Uh, I tell guys, you, I give guys compliments too. And that's a good way to start a photo session. And I try and make photographing someone fun. And that, that seems to bring out the best in people. Now, here's a tip for all the people that hate having their photo taken. Uh, and uh, Stephanie, we were talking about this earlier. If you fight having your photo taken, it's not going to look good. It's not going to look good if you're fighting and not and 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 uh, uh, just like washing the dishes. If you say I hate having washing the dishes, it's going to be a drag. So here's my tip: when you're having your picture taken, say to yourself, "I love having my photo taken." This might be a complete falsehood, but it really works. So try it. I love having my photo taken. Now, here's something else I do. Um, as an exercise or possibly an OCD thing, when I'm not photographing, I watch people's faces and I pick out their most flattering angles and I take imaginary photos. It's kind of like a, it's just practice. So that brings me to where, where I am now. I'm in Maui. And I'm living about five miles outside the burn zone of the catastrophic Lahaina fire. So I want to pay tribute to everyone that's lost so much in this disaster. Got friends here online that um, that have been affected, um, and um, just want to give you a shout out. Um, with my photography, I'm trying to promote positivity and be a give back to the community. I love live music, and I'm often inspired to photograph musicians, celebrations, and friends. 
I want to encourage people to go out and support local music. Uh, here are some favorite photos uh, recent from Maui. Um, much of this is from Maui's music scene. Uh, most of the musicians in the photos are local and not household names. Uh, it's all, these were all shot digitally. I use a variety of lens, lenses, but my favorite lenses uh, are a 70 to 200 millimeter and a 17 to 35 millimeter, both f2.8. So uh, I'm going to go back to uh, sharing my screen and photos. Let's see. Hopefully this is well, and there, that's where we ended. Um, here's where we go. This is a scene of some of the devastation, um, but there's a rainbow. There has to be hope. Um, the community's moving forward. This was from a march that happened earlier this year. Uh, for community unity and to pay tribute to the people that lost their lives. It's part of the march. Sometimes people think that flag is the British flag. It's the Hawaii state flag. This is Nanoa Thompson, uh, a, a respected uh, community elder, uh, captain of the sailing boat, um, uh, uh, Hokulea. And now this is part of the music scene. This is this is how I, what I like to do to spend my time. I love live music. Um, some people, when they hear live music, it makes them want to get up and dance. It makes me want to take photos. I love photographing people being high and happy and living their passion. Uh, and photographing musicians, well, um, if they're doing their job, they're, they're living their passion. Uh, so uh, this is what I'm, these are situations that I love being in and the excitement and positivity makes me want to capture it. This is, these are all uh, local Maui musicians and they're inspiring me to take photos. This is from a, a benefit for Ukraine from a couple of years ago. The musician Ron Artis and my friend Jerry Kowarski. And uh, oh, my good friend David Frazier, he's in the audience. How do you like that? Um, Gretchen, Gretchen Rhodes. These are, these are people, these are my friends. These are the people I hang out with. Uh, these are the people that inspire me. Uh, Ken Emerson, uh, uh, Vi uh, Vainani uh, Te Aloha, the hula dancer, uh, Slack Key Mas Master Ledward Ka'apana, uh, Rock Hendricks, uh, local musician, and Slack Key Master Jeff Peterson. Uh, so uh, this is all sharing. Photography for me is about um, sharing uh, and celebrating. Um, I want to be photographing positive things. Uh, here's Cheryl Renee. Um, and Ramblin' Jack Elliott when he's visiting Maui. Uh, my friend Don Lopez. Uh, Paul Marchetti. Uh, these are guys that are, uh, like I said, this is my inspiration. Uh, when I hear good music uh, and people being high and happy, I want to take a picture. Uh, there's a, there's a, a hippie community in Maui, a real strong hippie vibe. And I like that. Um, alternative lifestyles. And uh, living outside the box, uh, maybe going back to my days uh, hanging out in the houseboats. This is a May Day celebration.
Here's Mick Fleetwood. He lives on Maui. And there's there's Maury in the middle. And uh, uh, Daniel Ho, he's got lots of Grammy Awards. I think six. Just uh, this is the party scene. And uh, Lucas Nelson, he lives on Maui. And my friend Ron Motorie, local club. Paul Simon, he lives on, he has a home on Maui. And this is Missy Aguila, belting it out. And uh, I like celebrating. Um, I like photographing uh, people being high and happy. Tempa, uh, Tempa Naoa, Tempa Nave, excuse me, uh, Matt Del Omo. There's a Mardi Gras celebration. And finally, uh, just one of the clubs on, on Maui that I like hanging out at. So, um, my passion is, uh, is photographing people having fun and positivity. And uh, my goal is uh, to capture it so I get to keep some for myself and share the rest. So um, I want to uh, just thank all of the people who've shared themselves to be in my photos, uh, who've uh, taken the time to spend their evening with me. I'm really uh, so flattered and so honored uh, to have you join me. And uh, so just a big thanks to you and all the people who've uh, been part of my um, very long ride as a photographer. So that's it. Any questions? I'm open for, for, for uh, uh, the floor is now open. That was amazing. Feel well, free to um, hit the the hand raise, and we can call on you, or or just we can keep it informal. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Bruce. This is Dona speaking to you from Sausalito on her old World War II landing craft. I thank you know. so much. Um, one of the best photographs of me you took. And uh, I love you very much, Bruce. And I'm so glad that you are still photographing people. It has been a joy to see your presentation tonight. Thank you for your nice words. You know, um, you said you love the photo. I did not take that photo by myself. We did it together. Yes, we did. We did. And so, yes. so um, this was, we shared it. And, and thank you. We created it together. Yes, we did. And we did that on that group photo that night at the seahorse. And we all did that photo together too. And well, just keep on. You're a thank delight. You. Thank you. Uh, David Frazier, did you raise your hand? Oh, how did. I'm okay. trying to raise my hand. Oh, my cousin Kate. Hey, I just want to say thank you. It was so inspiring and it brought back so many memories. And I've known you since you were like, we were children. You and Susan were at the Art Institute. It was like, how did we get so old? You know. <laughs> but thank you. Know. It was just so inspiring and and so much beauty and I love your message that, you know, just about passion and positivity. That just was very lovely. So thank you. Well, thank you, Cousin Tate. Uh, I see a hand down here. It's Dennis. Thank you. Wonderful show. Uh, I was stricken by the consistency of your tonal ranges and processing on the black and whites, uh, even though the obviously spanned you know quite some time differential and I was curious uh did you arrange 
that for this presentation or is that just how you do things in general you have presets that you go to uh throughout your your career in order to establish a consistent uh portfolio I'm just wondering well um i spent many many years working in a dark room um and i i i studied the masters the um uh and and I love looking at at beautiful black and white prints, and and so um, the the photos there were all scanned scanned from negatives, and huh. then uh, and then I worked hard on them uh, in Lightroom, the the program Lightroom, uh, getting all the tones right. And I am a I I work I work do a lot of post production. As far as making sure contrast and and uh, tonal range, I put a lot of work into that. So it, it's it's sort of not just happenstance. Um, okay. Anything else, guys? See Joe Tate with his hand up. <clears throat> oh, and you're on unmute. mute, Joe. We can't hear you. Uh, uh, unmute. There he is. Okay. Over here. No. You still on mute, Joe? Uh, lo lower, lower right hand corner, lower left hand corner. Uh, it depends on what he's on. <laughs> okay. Now, oh, <laughs> here you go, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Now I got. Wait, I just have to say something first. This guy, um, I mean, he's a legend. But he also should know better because uh, he's a musician. And what is this? You don't even know how to unmute. Okay, now we're yeah, yeah, right. well, the first first step, step, go take. Nothing happened at first. But anyway, that's a, beside the point. I just love seeing pictures of my kids there. You know, when they were just toddlers, and they're out there running around the skinny gangplanks. I mean. We should get some kind of negligent parent award or something, you know. <laughs> Fortunately, they, they all survived it, except for a couple of them. Yeah. A couple of them didn't make it. But it wasn't because of the gangplanks. Anyway, uh, I thought we'd see some pictures of the cruising club. Because uh, you, you used to come. Well, you yeah. Know, I, I had to draw the line somewhere. I, you know, I'm in Maui, so I can. Yeah. <laughs> next, next show, we'll, ha we'll have, uh, I'll, I'll do Marin County. All right, you're forgiven. <laughs> Love you, Bruce. It's all good. Looks like 4GDBEW has a question. Yeah. And he's muted. There we go. I'm not sure if that's referring to yeah, us and me or not. But yeah. uh, Bruce, that was a tremendous performance there. Keep on seeing one. Well, thank, you. Say, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to say one shot. Say that was fantastic. I couldn't beat that one. And then you, you end up beating it with the next one. Well, well what nice words. Thank you. Um, uh, this, uh, I'm going to confess that this was this. I had to draw on all my resources to, uh, to do this talk. I'm, I'm a, I'm a visual person. I'm not a wordsmith. And uh, I had to uh, uh, take my advice and pretend to be confident while I was doing this. <laughs> Well, at least you did his thing. I want to say I really we have your book, but I loved um, the narration of the Sausalito book. Um, it's just fascinating, and um, you know, recently I've been bike riding around a lot of those, you know, those areas, and it's still, you know, pretty um, non-developed in a lot of those boatyard areas. Um, love seeing the photos. Well, uh, and thank you, Marsha. I hope your knee's feeling better. <laughs> We're getting there. Good, good. Uh, yeah, are we going to see you tomorrow? Uh, or Saturday or Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Thanks, Bruce. All right. Anybody? Oh, uh, we have a hand here, Sally. Sally. And don't forget to unmute Sally. Okay. Hi. Um, 
thank you so much for doing this. And I, I'm so thrilled about that tip. I think it's really going to work. I hate to have my picture taken and it shows, but, um, I even practiced a little bit during this little thing saying, I love to have my picture taken and I could <laughs> see that I just lit up, you know? So, uh, I can't wait to use that all the time yep. and, uh, really treasure you, Bruce. Thanks so much. Hey, Sally, thank you for those nice words. We have a question from David. Don't forget to unmute. David Frazier has his hand up. Don't forget to unmute, David. Un unmute, David. Here's, yeah. another, here's another musician that's having trouble with uh, <laughs> sound engineering. Okay. The little microphone bottom left. Yes. See the bottom left little microphone not working. Uh -huh. um, Let's see. Anybody else have a question? We'll come back. Write Maybe it on a piece of paper and hold it up to the screen. Yeah, really. David, <laughs> are you in an iPad? Yeah, the iPad has a mute button at the top. Top right. Yeah, that's right. You can write your question if you'd oh, like he's, in the he's, chat. He's, he's really doing this. <laughs> Not working. Not working. Um, oh, I wish I could unmute you. And, but I, I and, and, and here's what I got to say. This is the hardest working musician on Maui, and he says he's not working. I, that, I, that's, <laughs> I, that's, that's not true. So uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's not working for him. Yeah, he's working. He's unmuted now. I just got it. Where am I now? Yeah, right there. There I am. Okay. Thank you. What's up? Now my dog Mojo wants to speak. No, I I thought that was a fabulous, fabulous showing, and I thought that your narration was every bit as good as Peter Coyote any day. Uh, yeah. Going back to the earlier part of, of your career when you were filming in, in uh, Sausalito and just really gave um, a deep feeling for what that was like for all those people in that his time in history. And... Um, Rita, you wanted to say something, oh, too, didn't you? Was, this is my wife, Rita. And we're, and I can't tell you how much we uh, appreciate and enjoy your friendship in addition to your photography. So, Rita, why don't you say what you oh, want? Oh, well, you know, from the first time we met you, I just felt like you had a way of capturing somebody's inner spirit. And, you you know, the, the photos that you, you share with us are just amazing because, you know, you, you really do um catch that moment you know in somebody's life when they're feeling excited or just happy or pensive but you you can do it and, and uh you do it with all the friends that we know that you take pictures of so i think that's a pretty fantastic gift and i think that's all about your eye and your ability to reach out you know and and, and uh, encourage people to just do the things you said you know so thank you for all the wonderful Oh, and for too. sharing your spirit with all of us that you know thank you, thank you for your nice words uh he's he's actually probably saying this because i included a photo of him in the slideshow um <laughs> but um i i i like people um um uh, that's that's one of the things behind this is that um i i do really like people i agree with her and in particular jane goodall's photo I felt that really captured her essence. That little tiny smile on her face. That was an amazing shot. Th th thank you, Marie. I do so enjoy your dancing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we have a question from Time Machine. Oh, uh, Michael. Well, first of all, I got to say, you took me back to probably, it was one of the earlier images in your presentation, but it it's going to stick with me for a long time was the houseboat named Sugarloaf. Mm. That was so cool. Yep. The question I had for you when you were talking about your portrait photography, did you really say something as audacious as Cambodia to Henry Kissinger? Was he just being so snippy with you that you just snapped back at him? I, I, I was desperate. Um, you know, I'm a kid and, and, you know, I'm given these assignments 
And it's set up sort of in a very sort of casual way saying, uh, nobody's ever gone to Henry Kissinger and said, oh, Bruce Forrester is gonna take your photo and you know, aren't you excited about that? Um, somebody's got um, the magazine that I'm working for has gone to him and said to you know to to his agent and said you know he's going to be here and uh if 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 he feels like like you having you taking his photo uh, well then I'm sure he'll be glad to have you take his photo and so I had to sort of like make it happen and no he was he came out in a bad mood and um, and said, no, I'm out of here. And uh, I, I did say something like that, or, or, you know, maybe I didn't say it was cool, because it was dreadful. But I said, you know, tell me about it, or, you know, tell me, you know, we're about your decision to do this or something like that. Um, when, you know, the reality is, he's an extremely controversial person. And some people say he's responsible for millions of uh, deaths. So, uh, and but you weren't and, confrontational and, and, and to smiling, him. There I am taking a smiling photo of him. So no, never. <laughs> amazing. So, uh, but I'm working. This is my job. And uh, uh, a, a photo of him uh, that wasn't, uh, you know, I'm supposed to get a cover shot for whatever magazine I'm working for. But a lot of this was, yes, I'm flying. I'm, I'm a kid. I'm not Annie Leibowitz. So uh, people aren't giving me a, a whole afternoon or, or a day to, sh to photograph them. It's me sort of uh, just cornering them. Uh, I had a technique that I called assertively putting someone on a pedestal. So I'd kind of go and say, wow, you're so fantastic. Um, you mind if I take a couple of photos? Um, and it usually worked. Brilliant. So I just have to say something. Did you hear that guy's voice? That's a radio voice. This man is, uh, you don't get a better a better voice than uh, what you just heard from, from Michael. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed in one of your photos, there was one of our... Um, uh, premier dancers, free-spirited dancers on the island uh, caught by one of your photos, Mr. Mari King, who happens to be uh, <laughs> along with us. Mari, do you have uh, any comments you'd like to... Uh, uh, Mari, raise your hand, please. There he is. Okay. <laughs> That's credit, more. Credit is well, very, very enjoyable to watch your slideshow, and uh, I could really relate to the Maui pictures you capture a lot of energy in those pictures. It shows you're really passionate and you seem to know right when to push the button. <laughs> you know what? Uh, thank you for mentioning that because I, now I'm going to say something else. Photography, well, in the old days, um, uh, there was the term, the decisive moment. Uh, this was co uh, uh, coined by the very great photographer, Henry Cartier-Bresson. And back then you'd have a roll of film with 36 shots on it so you had to be very decisive with when you took your photo and you had to kind of like be watching and and trying to be an exact in that moment well that's how i was raised um i i'm trying to be in synchronicity with that moment um to try and get that that amazing special instant. Um, and one of the reasons why it's so much fun to photograph musicians is that when you're listening to the music, you get into that. So you say, bam, that's it. Or that's it. So uh, uh, thank you for mentioning that, Maury. You know, it's part of, it's part of being in, in the synchronicity of the moment. So Bruce, it's Marie. I think this is just a beginning and I want I want more. And I want much more. <laughs> yep. uh, me too. Me too. Uh, now I've turned into an old person and it's amazing to look back and think I've been doing this for 50 years. I thought I put up my hand. Did you find a Oh, Susan, Bruce? I see you. You look beautiful. But I have another question. Did you develop your own pictures back then when you were working for the city? 
all the black and white photos I developed personally. Wow. Uh, and uh, the color uh, was sent out and it was color slide film. You could usually send it out and have it come back the next day. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, but I'm going to tell you one of the things, sometimes I'm shooting color color slide film and putting it in a, in a, in a plastic envelope and shipping it out, never seeing it. Um, that was part of part of the job back in those days. Uh, photography was very, very different be before digital. So that, I have a question. Is it uh, with with digital cameras where you can just push the button down and take picture after picture? Is it easier to capture the moment if you could just take 30 shots in a second or two? Yes and no. And the, and the yes part is, yeah, technically, yes, if you just uh, turn your camera on and with a with a with a motor drive, yes, it'll capture it. But in a sense, no, because you're not paying attention to the moment. You're not mm. you're you're not saying, okay, and now um, you're 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 kind of taking like a, a fire hose and hoping, that you'll get it, mm. you'll, you'll, you'll cover it. Whereas uh, somebody who's, who, who's, who's with that moment is gonna say, this is that moment. It sounds like it takes the art out of it. In a, you just in push a, the button. Yeah, it changes the art. You know, now, yeah. uh, <laughs> it, instead of it being the decisive <laughs> moment, now people are making um, the post-production more decisive. They'll have a hundred photos and they'll say, okay, this is the one, but they're deciding after the fact instead of when they take the photo. And, and it becomes a different mindset. Um, so instead of um, uh, saying, I'm being something where it's more from the heart, where you're trying to be in the moment, you're cerebral in looking at all these photos and saying, no, not this one, not this one. Uh, how about this one or this one or this one? I can't decide. It turns it <clears throat> into a much more cerebral process. It's interesting though, with musicians in particular vocalists, it's really hard to get the right moment because you'll get weird expressions when they're singing. It's, it's uh, hard to shoot musicians. It's true. Um, and I hate I hate microphones being in front of people's faces yeah. that comes with it. But um, you get in sync with them. And I mean, this is what's really fun for me is, you know, watching a musician, you say, OK, you get to watch them and you get to be connected to them um, with with their music. And then you see, OK, uh, and if you're if you're together with them, you say this is that moment and where they look good and. And, and they're in their passionate moment. I think Susan has a question. And after Susan, Peter has his hand up. Oh, I just oh, oh wanted... wait, wait, this is my beautiful wife. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say wait. I was there and it was really fun at the time. And it's so cool to, to have it all preserved and to relive it. Okay, know? now this is why I love her so much. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> All right, Peter, you're up. Yeah, I was just going to say that this is uh, Shelby and my uh, 50th year here in Sausalito, and it was so great, uh, Bruce, to see your photos of our friends at the waterfront uh, down at that time and our time with you and recall so many of those folks, and it was just a uh, very good memory to have you show those wonderful photos and really appreciate your efforts all these years. It was beautiful. Thank you for, for your nice words. I remember Shelby being in my photo studio and and oh, and, wow. me. and what a beautiful model Shelby was. Yeah, well, she's here too. <laughs> well, we're not. Thank you for your nice words. Mallory has a question. Yeah. Um... Did I did I space out about have you done more current work still? Are you with digital? Are you going to show us that ever? Um, the photos I showed you from Maui, uh, many yeah. of them just taken 
uh, within the last month. Huh. Okay. So that's that's what I'm doing now. I'm photographing a lot of musicians uh, that because that's uh, uh, I'm I'm mostly just working for fun these days. I I do jobs every now and then, but not not that much anymore. Um, and uh, I love music. And if I hear good music, it makes me. Some people it makes you want to get up and dance. It makes me want to get up and take photos. And so, so I, that, that was recent work. So are you doing any film now, or just completely uh, digital stuff? I I I I have not shot film for many years. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons. You know, at this point in history digital is a better product than film it's way more versatile it's quicker uh it's easier to it's easy to transmit um but i do miss film terribly uh going from film to digital has made making a living as a photographer much more difficult um Wait. What? What? <laughs> Making a, I, I'd say uh, digital photography versus film photography has made making a living as a photographer far more difficult. Um, back when I shot film, you really couldn't feel. look at the back of your camera and say, oh, I got it. Or uh, I think I got it, but I can fix it in Photoshop. Back then, you had to um, know with absolute confidence that you got your shot. And I'm working in a lot of very high pressure situations where you just had to know your stuff. And um, with digital photography, it's a much, it's, it's more accessible. Um, it's a quicker learning curve. It's lowered the bar so that anybody can take a picture you, with your with their iPhone, and uh, I personally think it's kind of lowered uh, the bar in what people think as a good photograph. Um, and I have a very cynical saying about digital versus film, and I say. When I shot film, I was considered an artist. Now that I shoot digital, I'm considered a content provider. Mm. And I'm treated and paid accordingly. Don't hold back. Tell us how you really feel. No, that, that's how I really feel. But that's the world. That's you know, that's how that's how the world works. And musicians and writers, they say the same thing. And with a AI coming in, uh, who, who knows what the future holds? Yeah. But do we, do they, have they figured out uh, how long a digital photograph could last versus a real photograph? I, I think, I well, if you print the digital photograph on archival paper, that will last as long as as a as a a photo printed from film on archival paper. Huh. And, um, you're storing it on a hard drive or in the cloud, and um, yeah, eventually all hard drives will die. But if it's somehow stored archivally, no, a, a digital photo will last just as long. Huh. Okay, I didn't realize that. I don't know how many um, photographers we have left, but we should do um, our little photo challenge here. Okay. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna share my screen, and let's have you read this, Bruce. Oh, okay. Here's the April photo challenge. Take a formal portrait of someone that is important to you. Maybe a shopkeeper, famous personality, if that's the crowd you run with, or just a friend. Have the portrait reflect a personal interaction. 
Ooh. I don't get that part. About reflecting a personal interaction? Yeah. yeah. Is it well, well, that's kind of what we're talking about is that photography should be a connection. So um, as opposed to um, no connection. You know, that's like if you're sitting having a conversation with somebody and you just don't connect with that person at all versus you leave. Having, having, a, having sitting next to somebody and having a real connection. Now, that's, that's something that would happen in space, but think of this as something visual. So see if you can show a visual connection with a, in a portrait. Okay, thank you. I'll put that on the Facebook page so we can. Uh, what if we don't do Facebook? Would you like me to put it back up and you can take a screenshot? I don't know how to do that. Well, I just. Can you I, email it to me? Sure. Who's, yeah. I can't see who's talking. Um, Donut. I kind of like this one right here. Where, let's see. Um. Am I not on? No, it's I like MZ. That. Oh, I, I see you. Okay. Why don't yeah. you put your email in the chat and I'll send it to you right now. <laughs> God. I don't know if I can do that. Um, it's MZDIS at Rocket Mail. Oh, I wasn't uh, ready for you. Go ahead. Say it again. M as in Mary. Z as in Zebra. Got D it. Okay. I uh, at rock. Okay. I'll send you the flyer right now. Okay. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you, Bruce. I think you did an amazing job. And um, I will post your video probably tomorrow, possibly the next day. But I'll yeah. have it up for you very soon. Well, yeah, uh, I would love to see it more slowly, too. So I could do pause because I couldn't keep up with like I wanted to look more deeply into the some of these pictures. They're wonderful. Thank you. Well, oh, uh, Bruce. One thing I just wanted to mention was that the Issaquah Pilot Houses are at Galilee. Oh, Galilee. Oh, uh, oh, not at the Issaquah Dock. All right. Thank you. Thanks for correcting yeah. me. Yeah. And are you and Susan coming back to Marin anytime soon? Yes. Uh, July, June first. June first. Okay. Great. So, yeah. So with our um, lifestyle, um, we've got this worked out. So we live in Maui, usually from December to uh, the end of May, and then um, Marin County, uh, June to the end of November. Um, what a great life. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but um, uh, we love it. Great. Well, we love you. Both well, of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all this love. I, I, it's really, uh, I, it's, 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 it, I really feel it and it's so appreciated. Yeah. Both of you. Wonderful. I think we've, we're, we've uh, wrapped it up. Hey, thank you. That was great. Thanks, Bruce. Thank great great presentation. We really Aloha. Aloha. Aloha to you all. Thank you. Thanks, Paul, Louis, Aloha. All right. There we go. I Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Uh, oh, wasn't great. that great? That was awesome. Really good. <laughs> oh. Kudos, kudos. Oh, I, I'm, I'm so touched. I'm so touched. Hi. I don't want to leave. Oh. That was that was fun, Bruce. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Yep. Oh, Susan, you look dynamite in that bathing suit. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> you were great. Thank you. At least they waited till the end. Could you hear the dogs? Uh, no, uh, no, but... Uh, <laughs> That, was, that really was so, so, so much fun. I don't even want to leave. Oh, hey, Gary. Hi, Michelle. Hi.
Hey, yeah. we're missing you guys. We're hey. missing you. Aloha. Uh, I, and, 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 and congratulations. That was an awesome presentation. Awesome. Loved it. Loved it. Oh, that's so funny the way yeah, you got it. going yeah. in and out. <laughs> Take care. Have a fun rest of your trip there. All right. Thanks. And uh, you know, it's a it, 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 it's a party, but it's time to go home, and I don't really want to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Enjoy, you guys. Good to see you. All right. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Well, I guess Good I should. Night. Leave. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit end. Have a wonderful night, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Really appreciate all your help and support. All right. This was awesome. Aloha. Bye. Bye.